Thomas Mayer appeared to be an ordinary dad running a successful haulage company, living modestly in Warrington. His seemingly modest home concealed a lavish lifestyle, as evidenced by the flashy Range Rover and Corvette on the driveway. Inside, the opulence was even more apparent with Hublot and Rolex watches worth hundreds of thousands of pounds, valuable artwork, and a world map made from bullets. The extravagant wealth on display was far beyond what his declared earnings suggested, sparking a national crime agency investigation that would ultimately reveal his significant role in the criminal underworld. Thomas had managed to stay under law enforcement's radar for over two decades, with his eventual downfall only triggered by a completely unrelated case. In the spring of 2020, Thomas, despite the global pandemic, remained calm. From his Northern England residence, he communicated with a friend, boasting about his involvement in the illicit drug trade for over 20 years. Thomas emphasized his experience and strategic knowledge, asserting that he was no newcomer. Born and raised in Ireland, Thomas believed his criminal enterprise would endure the challenges posed by COVID-19. In response, Thomas's friend, with less than perfect grammar, eagerly expressed their impatience for the end of the lockdown, stating they couldn't wait to escape the current situation. Thomas agreed, noting the desperate need for normalcy. He then used simple code to describe drug runs from Europe to Ireland. Workwise taxiways meant that drug runs were currently proceeding smoothly, with flat referring to the Netherlands and two R's referring to Ireland. Thomas added that once the travel ban was lifted, they would be on the pig's back, an Irish expression indicating prosperous time. He reassured his friend that it was just a matter of time before they would be laughing, which is why he wasn't stressing. One reason for Thomas's lack of stress was his use of an Ankrashat phone, a sophisticated encrypted device popular among organized crime groups. By pressing a secret combination of buttons, users could access a hidden software system called Ankrashat, which allowed encrypted text and picture messages only between other Ankrashat users. Each device had its own handle or nickname, maintaining user anonymity. Thomas's handle was satirical, ensuring that users were unaware of each other's true identities. This technology created an anonymous, seemingly impenetrable virtual den of thieves. Publicly, Thomas presented himself as a road haulier operating trucks registered in Bulgaria to bypass UK regulations. However, beneath this facade, he played a more sinister role as a facilitator for organized crime syndicates. His involvement included arranging transportation for drug shipments and engaging in money laundering activities. Drugs entered Ireland through the UK while illicit funds flowed out. This trade was fraught with danger, with suspicions that some of Thomas's associates were linked to multiple murders. To ensure the safety of himself and his family, Thomas relocated from Ireland to Northwest England. Despite his criminal activities, Thomas maintained a seemingly normal life residing in a modest three-bedroom house in Warrington, Cheshire. His wife operated a beauty salon, however. Thomas indulged in the fruits of his criminal endeavors. He possessed an array of luxury items, including multiple high-end vehicles, valuable artwork, and a collection of expensive watches, notably four luxury watches worth an estimated $100,000 each, which remain unrecovered. Additionally, Thomas spared no expense on extravagant holidays, treating himself to first-class trips to Mexico and private helicopter rides over Manhattan, spending exorbitant amounts of money in the process. He also owned a second residence in Spain, where he kept a Porsche Cayenne and enjoyed a luxurious lifestyle. But before we go further with the story, please take a moment to like this video if you want to know what happened with Thomas Marr and his luxurious lifestyle. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to never miss a video. Now let's go on with the story. Thomas's fortune, however, took a turn for the worse. Having survived a stroke at 23, he suffered from a rare congenital heart condition and various other ailments, including plantar fasciitis, a painful foot condition that often hindered his ability to walk. Despite his health issues, Thomas continued his criminal activities until the law finally caught up with him. In 2019, Thomas's luck began to run out. He had sold a truck to an Irish criminal named Ronan Hughes, who used it to transport a trailer full of Vietnamese migrants from Europe to the UK. On October 22, 2019, the truck, driven by young Irishman Maurice Robinson, stopped outside the port in Essex. 
Maurice opened the doors. He discovered that all the migrants had tragically suffocated. Both Maurice and Ronan later pleaded guilty to 39 counts of manslaughter. To Thomas's surprise, the truck was still registered in his name, prompting the National Crime Agency, NCA, to approach him. Although investigators confirmed his innocence in the migrant conspiracy, they gradually uncovered his involvement in other criminal activities and began disrupting his operations and seizing his assets. Despite mounting pressure from law enforcement, Thomas remained confident in the security of his AnchroChat phone, a sophisticated encrypted device popular among organized crime groups. Little did he know that investigators were on the verge of intercepting his communications. Even as they targeted Thomas and confiscated his properties, he continued to use his AnchroChat device to plan and coordinate new ventures involving drug trafficking and money laundering. He firmly believed his phone was impervious to decryption. However, unbeknownst to him, the NCA was about to gain access to his communications. In late 2019, the NCA initiated Project Venetic, aimed at targeting EncroChat and its users in the UK. Despite significant technical difficulties and slow progress, the NCA was not the only law enforcement agency interested in EncroChat. Around the same time, an investigation led by the Lila Regional Court in France discovered Encro chat servers located in Roubaix, near the Belgian border. Although the French investigators never publicly disclosed the exact hosts of these servers, they obtained images of the hardware used by the Encro chat system. During their investigation, the French authorities uncovered details about Thomas's drug trafficking operation. Thomas relied on concealed compartments, known as hides or slots in lorries, to smuggle substantial amounts of Class A drugs, typically 97% pure cocaine. These hiding spots were located in various places, such as toolboxes, spare tires, or behind the illuminating glass panel above the windscreen. In one specific transaction, Thomas used his phone to arrange a deal involving 10 kilos of cocaine to be delivered to a lorry driver in the Netherlands who would transport them to the UK and eventually Ireland. Meanwhile, Thomas kept track of Ronan Hughes, the smuggler who had failed to register the truck he bought from Thomas, ultimately drawing police attention to him. Ronan had gone on the run following the tragic deaths of the migrants and was finally apprehended. In April 2020, the National Crime Agency, NCA, uncovered Thomas's obsession with Ronan Hughes from his messages. Thomas mentioned Ronan to an associate and speculated about incriminating evidence. When asked if Ronan had any, Thomas responded, Just rumors, mate. I'll find out if they arrest me again in the next few weeks. Despite making light of the situation, Thomas warned about the persistence of the NCA. Ronan continued to preoccupy Thomas. The next day, he messaged a contact asking if anyone knew someone in a specific prison, expressing his desire to have Ronan hurt but not killed. Thomas's messages were interpreted as a threat to Ronan's life, prompting the NCA to protect him. Thomas's anxiety about the NCA grew, leading him to discuss escape plans. He considered fleeing without a passport by hiding in a truck and traveling to mainland Europe, planning to obtain travel documents in Spain and move to a country without an extradition agreement with the UK. However, his plan was postponed due to a painful foot condition that made it difficult for him to walk. The situation escalated on June 13, 2020, when EncroChat, the encrypted phone network Thomas relied on, sent a message to its users. The message stated that their domain had been seized by government entities and that users should power off and dispose of their devices immediately. The NCA, recognizing Thomas as a flight risk, mobilized quickly to apprehend him and seize his EncroChat phone. They found him adhering to lockdown measures but his phone was missing. Despite not finding Thomas's EncroChat phone, investigators had obtained weeks' worth of data from it, including incriminating messages and photographs. Thomas chose not to comment during police interviews, but was charged with two counts of drug importation and two counts of money laundering. He pleaded guilty and was sentenced to 14 years and eight months in prison. The judge emphasized the destructive impact of drugs and Thomas's significant role in a professional and sophisticated operation. 
a separate charge of conspiring to commit grievous bodily harm against Ronan, was not pursued, as Thomas disputed the charge, and the case did not proceed to trial. Thomas became the first prominent criminal figure imprisoned due to EncroChat intelligence. Following the hack, law enforcement agencies made over 1,500 arrests and seized 115 firearms, 5,000 kilos of Class A drugs, and 56 million of criminal proceeds. Many convicted individuals like Thomas faced the loss of their liberty, lifestyles, and ill-gotten wealth. This was the insane story of Thomas Maher. Please hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Also take a look at our channel because there will be more videos that you will find interesting.